I am so disgusted by this documentary that just came out on Netflix. This covers the case of Jonathan Mayer who has fathered at least 600 children. Although the sperm banks say it could be more like 3,000. He was scamming the sperm banks and he was telling these families that he only wanted to help five families. When in reality, he was doing this 140 times a month and traveling internationally. He's not the only one. He has a group of friends who are also mass donators. There's a group in Kenya that is aiming to have these men father at least 200 babies a year. These are mostly white men and one of the guys says that he can't wait to bleach Kenya with his genes. This guy was even mixing his sperm with another man and playing sperm roulette. As you can imagine, the women in this documentary are very unhappy and they take him to court. I've never seen anything like this and any guy who does anything remotely close to this needs to get know what you guys think in the comments and hit follow for more recommendations hi guys welcome back to our channel in case you're new here my name is maren and i'm maureen so in today's video we are going to be talking about a silent trend that is slowly creeping up and taking over africa not only africa but around black dominated places in in the world and this is because palm colored people have taken an initiative i don't know if it has it has just begun or it has always been the agenda to whiteify a majority of uh, the black population beginning with africa Africa. I'm wondering how this is not of concern because I feel like this is a problem that is brewing under the you surface. Know, under the surface. Yeah, and of, of course, guys, I feel like since this is the an, an agenda clearly that is being driven by the palm colored people, I feel like uh, right now uh, procreation is being weaponized mm. in such a way that them that not just procreating to procreate they're procreating with a hidden hidden agenda unlike black people mm -hmm. they're procreating specifically with black people so that they can whiteify the black nation and as, for you to know that it's really problematic mm -hmm. is when you see uh the more you know palm colored people they're comfortably you know coming out, out and speaking speak about yes. how they're spreading their, their seeds, seeds in not, africa exactly not not because they have a huge legacy that they'd like to leave around children to you know to take up but just because they're proud and they're, they're pride and ego yeah, allows they're proud them. that the ones who are going to finally whiteify africa and you know this is not the only place that is taking place even when you look at hollywood right now as it will be shown to you via this video that we are about to play you before we talk too much guys let's watch this video and then we come back and talk about it and you leave us your comment on what you think about this very same issue and also consider subscribing if you've not let's watch africa they are doing it in reverse europe has a population decline their women are empowered they either don't want a child or they don't want to sleep with a man in order to procreate a child that's why these sperm banks are on the rise they want to apply the system of europe here because they also understand the psychological thinking of the women here and their state of finances. That is why cloth cloth tourism is very high in Cape Town. You can do your inbreeding there to women who are trafficked, or you can also go to websites or dating sites for women who are desperate for a white tea man or lobster, whatever. The one that leans to the websites come in in a form of love and affection so that they can inbreed you be left with a breeder child with a man that does not care about you that's exactly what happened to congolese women with the jacapan men they were psychologically manipulated with love and affection they were not graped and it needs to be emphasized since they got pregnant for them so such a mistake would not happen to me because i don't want a baby with a white man never let's talk about the rise of the biracial black girl in hollywood and what it means for the future of black female representation on screen I want to start with the visual of Zendaya because I think there's no better person to really represent the success of mixed race women or even mixed race people in general on screen than Zendaya. That being said, the purpose of this video is not to bash Zendaya or anybody else that's going to be brought up in this video. Rather, I think Zendaya and the folks I'm going to be mentioning are examples of a much larger pattern that we're seeing in Hollywood that's indicative of a systemic issue related to colorism and anti-blackness within the media. Ultimately, this issue does not fall on the shoulders of one or two people, but rather will require extensive industry reform. So just keep that in mind. Now let's get into the video. If you haven't noticed, every coming of age show on Netflix, Hulu, Prime, etc. typically has a light-skinned biracial black girl um, as a lead or as a supporting character. Exhibit A, Outer Banks. Exhibit B, Never Have I Ever. 
Exhibit C, 13 Reasons Why, and Exhibit D, Ginny and Georgia. Now you might be wondering, okay, like, who cares? Why are we talking about this? Ultimately, this is an issue worth discussing because one of the biggest criticisms that's been voiced by black women, as well as just black folks in general, is this dwindling representation of unambiguous black women on screen, particularly as main characters. For example, in the early 2000s, we had shows like Ant Farm, True Jackson VP, and Coco Jones starring in Let It Shine. But unfortunately, what we're now seeing is this trend of light-skinned biracial girls playing fully black characters. Let's take a look. We have Amanda Stenberg in The Hate You Give, who is the daughter of these two folks over here, Zendaya and Casey Undercover, Yara Shahidi in Blackish, and also I think it's important to mention that like a lot of the folks in the Blackish cast actually are mixed race, and that's a whole nother discussion because Kenny Barris has come under fire for his representation of the Black family. I don't know if anybody remembers Kenya's show Black AF, but this was heavily criticized for its light skin casting and the way at which it's felt like he was trying to present a very diluted form of the black family by only having light skin, racially ambiguous black children. Looking at how biracial black girls are becoming the sole form of representation for black femininity on screen is one piece of the puzzle, but it's also important to look at what happens when we have a biracial black girl and a black girl in the same show. And I think the best example of this is High School Musical, the musical, the series, starring Sophia Wiley and Dara Renee. From episode one, Courtney, played by Dara Renee, is very much positioned as Nini, played by Olivia Rodrigo's black best friend, her sidekick, and she's sassy, she's kind of aggressive, and it honestly reeks of the angry black woman stereotype. Yet Sophia Wiley's character, Gina, is very much positioned as a lead and a character with substance and depth. It's also worth mentioning that Gina's love interest got significantly more screen time and attention compared to Courtney's. Like, why did we never see this guy? Or this guy? Like, you really never saw Courtney and Jet or Courtney and Howie together all that much. Yet the bulk of season four revolved around Gina and Ricky's love story. And on that note, one trend I'm noticing is the white boy and the biracial black girl being put together as love interests. This happens in Outer Banks, Spider-Man, and Ginny and Georgia. Now, I think this is really interesting because I think it represents a sharp contrast from what I was exposed to in terms of interracial relationships on screen. The very first memory I have of seeing um, interracial couples was really rags with Kiki Palmer and Max Schneider. And while we still have fully black girls being with white guys on screen, it's really interesting how I'm seeing less and less of this. And like I said, more of the white boy and the biracial black girl. This ultimately raises the larger question of does blackness have to be diluted to be marketable? I don't know if you remember, but during the pandemic, Coco Jones released a video about what happened to her career and why she kind of fell off after Let It Shine. And in this video, she talks about how she was constantly told she was not marketable enough. Now, if you're watching that video in live time, you would see that a lot of people were commenting slash comparing her to Zendaya and how, you know, despite the fact that Zendaya was never mentioned by name, that's what a lot of people jumped to. In no way am I trying to promote division between Coco Jones and Zendaya, but what's interesting is that they both were on the come up on Disney Channel around the same time, the early 2010s, and whereas Zendaya got Shake It Up and all of these major opportunities, Coco Jones really wasn't left with much. Now I'm so proud of Coco Jones because she's now a Grammy winner, she's on Bel Air, she's worked with Renee Rapp and Justin Timberlake, and Disney was a fool to really fumble that opportunity. It is really heartbreaking to see how a dark skin girl like Coco Jones was constantly passed over. And it really enforces this larger point that I'm trying to make, where it seems like the marketability of blackness is contingent upon having a black female in close proximity to whiteness through a romantic relationship or a friendship, or by simply casting a black girl that is half white. If you haven't noticed, there is definitely a biracial look in Hollywood. From what we've been discussing, it should be clear that the ideal biracial has white features, sand color slash graham cracker colored skin, and 3B or 3C hair. This is important because despite the fact that Zendaya and Laura Harrier were both in Spider-Man and both of them are biracial, it seems like Zendaya is often the one that's most coded as biracial, whereas Laura Harrier is more positioned to be seen as a fully black woman. And we can infer that that is most likely because she's slightly darker than Zendaya and has different features. But what's problematic about Zendaya serving as one of the few examples of black femininity on screen is that it really oversimplifies what it means to be a mixed race person, and in this case, a mixed race woman. Mixed race black people come in all different shades, have different features, and there's no one way to be biracial, and there should be no ideal biracial look. So when you constantly put out biracial girls that all look the same and have similar features, it upholds this idea that there's only one way to be biracial. 
And it's also harmful to fully black girls because they're really not seeing themselves in actresses like um, Zendaya. And while you could argue that Zendaya does look like some fully black girls who just came out light skinned but have two black parents, at the end of the day, the majority of black girls with two black parents do tend to look darker than Zendaya. And so to have her be, you know, their representation is very much misleading and ultimately harmful. While Zendaya has acknowledged that she is Hollywood's version of an acceptable black girl, mere acknowledgement isn't enough. Ultimately, what we need to see is reform from the very top, particularly within casting. Right, A casting director is the gatekeeper when it comes to a project. They decide who's getting the job and who's not. Therefore, if casting departments aren't diverse and they don't have a wide range of people with different skin tones and experiences and perspectives, then it's very unlikely that we're going to see any change. I want to end this video by saying that I am really proud of Zendaya, and as a mixed race person, it is really cool to see more mixed race representation on screen. That being said, we do have to ask the question, is biracial black progress necessarily progress for all black people? I've heard the argument that biracial progress is coming at the expense of blackness, and that's really heartbreaking to me because what benefits us does not necessarily benefit all black people. And so it's really important that as a mixed community, as biracials, that we really speak up about this and say something. Not in a light skin savior way, but at the very least, we need to say like, hey, this is unacceptable and we're not going to stand for it. So guys, welcome back. Let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section. You know, what what has really gotten me in this video mm -hmm. is how like a very ordinary palm colored person he's not see, even rich that he will leave all these a thousand plus kids with something to inherit or so that they can live better he's just going there spreading his <coughs> anyway he could choose to do a lot of things that he will be remembered for in his life but the only thing this man ch chooses to partake in is to contribute you know he wants to bleach Africa. He wants yeah, to bleach the that. population of Africa. Africa. That's his biggest goal. That, is, that, that be is his biggest achievement. And that is how he wants to go down in history as the person who successfully managed to whiteify Kenya. And you guys, you know, such people, I'm not even going to lay blame on these kind of people. Mm -hmm. Let me just bring these are our african people together because if you look at kenya you guys they mm -hmm. worship the, the number, white skin. they worship the white skin right now i've also started seeing a lot of a, a big trend in how it's not just the women now who are marrying uh palm colored people a Even lot of Kenyan our men, men they are going abroad and they're coming back they are mm -hmm. exporting themselves to foreign whiteified countries and to get themselves biracial babies my, my question is guys i don't mean to come out uh, out and sound i'm just curious okay so yeah. for those of you who can satisfy my curi curiosity okay just like just let me know for men okay you know women are different but <laughs> how how <laughs> no just let me just let me get to my point for okay. men i know men are very like when you're coming from a certain culture for men that is a very strong like the woman you get married to predominantly your kids are going to take that culture the food you're going to eat as a man is going to be prepared by your wife right mm -hmm. so my question to men is because i've seen this as a joke in nigeria where a content creator and it doesn't apply to to nigerians or mm -hmm. it's the all of africa mm -hmm. african men right mm -hmm. you go and marry as a nigerian you and the nigerians love their food more in mm -hmm. even the rest of africa and love nigerian food and their spices mm -hmm. so as a man you go and marry a palm colored woman right mm -hmm. so let's picture these two situations the man married to a palm colored woman and the man married to his nigerian wife or any other african lady okay mm -hmm. you know <coughs> women how are you going to this might be a stereotype so please go, correct me if i'm wrong mm -hmm. nigerian men how are you the, the process of which where you try and get used to eating burgers because it's a palm colored woman's uh, you know they can't cook for you a goosey soup right <laughs> they can't cook for you jollof rice right so for you to start adjusting now and you start eating but that's what not even the big no i'm just asking <laughs> How do you do it? <laughs> Food is not even the big <laughs> issue. You know, sometime in future, five, ten years from now, mm -hmm. we African natives, you know, I'm just pic picturing a situation where if uh, white people with their weaponized procreation, if they manage to do what they're set out to do, mm -hmm. five, ten years from now, black people who look like me have redu significantly reduced in number because both us as females and males we are marrying outside and we are marrying not other black people but 
white people, you know. Mm. Um, Another how, issue, uh, a lot of biracial people will be here and minority will start being mis mistreated and being told, go back to your where you are, wherever you're coming from, this is not your country. And then, you know, another issue that was brought forth was the issue in Hollywood right now, the representation right. of a black person. Mm -hmm. Guys, let me tell you something so that you can have the picture of us mm -hmm. growing, growing up, up, what we used to see. Mm -hmm. So growing up, we used to see uh, movies that if they say a black person in a movie, it was we'd, a black we'd, person we'd in see a movie, people, right? Yeah. And then we, as we grew up a little older, we started seeing people people like that's so raven i don't know how many of you guys remember that show and then we'd see other people like uh skin type like mixed jendaya okay in short we'd see biracial people with very nice hair but they were insane. few they were very they were few yes. in the movies we used to watch um growing up you'd see bl the picture we saw was of a black person let's say a black woman but a black woman wearing the, wigs. Wigs. wigs and then you know we, we never say, saw wigs natural wigs. hair we never saw natural hair so marine and i would often ask ourselves if they're black like us how come their they hair is better not hair just, like ours just, just, just children like mentality. conversation and mentality mm -hmm. and then we'd ask ourselves uh okay as we go, uh, africans we have for see and all that kind of hair right but what the black people we are seeing in our televisions as we they have not the concept hair. of weaves and wigs yeah and they have guys, different hair right you guys legit uh our generation growing up we used to think black americans and africans we have Totally different, different features. And we don't mean in types of texture. We yeah. mean like totally, totally different. Because even the black Americans we'd see, they they had Eurocentric features like the long pointy mm -hmm. nose. We didn't know there was faces. Yeah, we didn't. As growing up as kids, we didn't know that that was because of surgery. You could buy yourself a or better because nose. of type casting. casting. You know, you, you take a certain have people with certain features. features. Yeah, or if they don't have those certain features, you you, you take go for surgery. Those who've bought themselves. Eurocentric features, you know. Right. So it was not until we saw our first black person. I don't know Madea, what yeah, diaries of Ooh, a black woman. woman, and then we started seeing oh, there are there different people who types have of afros, the right? different types of black America. There are those ones who braid. Mm. And, and you like, guys, wow, legit, even we knew. We are like, we look the same, you know. Yeah, and legit, if, even if right now Taylor Perry has a lot of scandals and what not, he shaped yeah, in the, Africa, yeah, he shaped he the idea the of uh, black people and he kind of represented the silent generation that wasn't right. Being, especially black people who are like skin deep black. Mm. Yeah, and that is one thing. Like Taylor Perry kind of for us, he mm -hmm. was the introduction of uh, for us of, of a true America, black American, American woman. Population. And he made us understand that Difference. the black America comes in different shades, not mm -hmm. only the D Zendaya shade, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, so, so guys, guys uh, in uh, Hollywood right now, it's being normalized, yeah, and for black people to be represented in such, such form, yeah. And you know, guys, what happens is me as a black uh, African seeing these types of movies and also a child in america right now seeing these types of movies where black people are solely represented by zendaya mm -hmm. not an, any other dark person but zendaya me as a black child i will grow up wanting my child to be that light mm -hmm. so that they can also be considered as the right kind of black shade and you get, get for them to get opportunities, opportunities right? and what happens is this kind of very dark dark and black people go out looking for muzungus white people they go out looking for people People who will give them biracial kids and now you see since childhood this black um, individual has been indoctrinated to think that this is not the shade black. of black that should exist in the world yeah. that, i think that is why I, we are right now we are seeing a lot of people having biracial kids especially they're in trying africa to wash, yeah they're trying to wash that they that, that is the agenda they're selling here in africa yeah and you know on the other hand also you guys i don't feel like i can blame africans mm. because we normally say on this platform unless you look for this information it doesn't our really education come to system you. does not really teach africans the true identity of who palm colored people are our schools do not really teach the extent of what our ancestors went through during colonization so when it's um, it's kind of like a romanticized syllabus where they talk about you know as we the, normally tell yeah, you yeah the palm colored people in a good light exactly they came they, they discovered us from victoria this. they created 
said you know those things that they inject you with to prevent you from catching this and this and that we can't say it because we don't want tr no trouble you know mm -hmm. but this they tell us they come to save us but what in they my opinion they come to introduce new in these communities new what, things that make you sick yeah what what they don't t tell africans the rural history history that they don't really touch on mm -hmm. uh, is about king leopoldo uh, king leopold and what he did and the his true kind what they all did right and you know the sad part is who's going to tell them right now you can't use ignorance as a defense because there's internet and everything mm -hmm. but let me tell you if you don't think your society has a problem you don't exactly go, go out, out looking, looking for, for this, this information. Specific information and that is why a lot of Africans are still, are still in the dark because they're not necessarily going out to looking look for this information. They don't, they they don't, don't even know. know what they're looking for. They're, you know, yeah. Then they only know the blue-eyed blonde man or woman they saw in a movie. They know Superman. You know, Superman comes in and swoops Lois Lane. They don't ask themselves why is why is Lois, Lois Lane not looking like them. You know, but the the whole romanticized uh, idea of being palm colored that is what Africans see. When they look at when they watch TV, they see Kardashians and that is all they see. The luxury, you know, the luxury that is uh, uh, comes with them, the opportunities and you're like, yeah. that is what you want for your child. And in short guys, what I came to realize watching this episode is that black people all over the world Stop saying it and start doing it. We need to tell our own stories. Mm. Us personally, we feel like this is our own way of telling African stories and black American stories and black people everywhere. Mm. At the end of the day, I think there shouldn't only be one Taylor Perry who's telling uh, black stories. I feel like black people should develop their own film industries so that when black kids are growing up, they should know that they're represented, their mm. true blackness is represented, mm. and they're not seeing themselves through the eyes of a biracial although there's nothing wrong with biracials also because i'm happy they have a representation of their own too mm, but as someone said it's like the representation of uh, biracial uh, people is taking opportunities away from the true black communities anyway we leave it there because those are some kind of controversial words we've said another yeah. uh, group of uh, creators who really came to light are the wyan brothers although then we discovered them a little bit late later so yeah. Perry, let's say was the the main person for us yeah, or in Africa how, yeah of how we discovered there were different shades of black people right and different shades of hair too yeah anyway guys let us know what you think about this episode in the comment section as usual we appreciate you very much for joining us on this episode let's catch you on the next if you're new here kindly remember to subscribe share this video with someone you think might benefit from it and also leave us a like we'll really appreciate it thank you so much for joining us